Hi, this is Tim from Organic Backyard Gardening. I've been building raised beds with drip irrigation for several years and have been having great success. In this short video, I'm gonna take you through all the build steps on how to build a raised bed with drip irrigation, how to secure all the material, and several tips I've learned along the way. Now, a couple benefits of raised beds. By raising the soil level, this allows the soil to warm up quicker in the springtime, allowing for earlier planting in some region. Raised garden beds also reduce back strain. It prevents soil compaction because you're not stepping in the garden. For wood selection, I use Douglas fir 2x10s. Now this is not as rot resistant as cedar, however it will last several years before rotting out. Cedar is much more expensive and not readily available in my area. I'll also use 4x4 posts to secure the corners. Please do not use pressure treated wood. The chemical used in the pressure treating process can leach into your soil and then into your food. In this example, I'm gonna make a four x four box. So I'll first measure out four foot long boards and cut them with a saw. I'll then lay them out on a flat surface and make sure that the angles are square. I'll also measure each opposite corner to make sure that the measurements are the same, ensuring that the box is exactly square. I'll then tack them in with screws. I'll then cut blocks for the corners, and these will be a little below the 10 inches so they don't show when they have soil over them. I'll then use four screws on each block. I'll move them over to the garden, and you'll notice that they're not level. This does not look right. A quick tip on leveling them out is to dig out the perimeter and level out the perimeter and then put that soil in where the bed would be. This saves time instead of having to level out the whole area of the raised bed. I'm also building a bed that's cascading. So I'm leveling out those two beds and then securing them together. I'm using some blocks to make sure that they're level, and then once I fill them in with soil, they'll, they'll stay level. Now that they're level, they're ready for soil. But before adding soil, I'll quickly flip over the existing grass to ensure it breaks down quicker. Some people add a weed barrier, however, that's definitely not needed and actually prevents earthworms from making their way into the garden. With a large project like this, you most likely have to bring in soil or compost. I like to find suppliers by using Google Maps and searching for organic compost near me. In this example, you can see there's many compost suppliers in the area. Many suppliers will have a blend of soil for establishing new beds. This typically includes organic matter, compost, and loam. For these beds, I'm just using straight compost that has worked great in the past. notice that I'm doing this in the fall season. From lessons learned in the past, fall is the best time to establish new beds. They'll be ready for you in the spring and you don't have to deal with the snow melt or an extended winter. In addition, compost suppliers are typically not as busy in the fall time. Don't be afraid to overfill the beds. The soil will definitely settle. Now it's time to install the drip irrigation. And drip irrigation is really easy to install. And I like the company dripworks.com. They have great documentation and really easy to use products. If you go down to click resources, you'll see the drip planning guide. This is a PDF that gives you all the details you need to know in order to plan your drip irrigation system. Drip irrigation allows you to put the water precisely where you need it. And with the slow release of the water, you can water for a long amount of time, and that ensures that the water makes it down to the plant's roots without overwatering. That is really important. You can also set it on a timer. And one of the most important aspects is that with the drip irrigation, you're not getting the foliage of the plants wet. And this is really important. With overhead watering, that can actually promote disease. Now most kits will come with a screen filter, 
a PSI regulator, and a female hose adapter. Later in the document, there's a great diagram of a raised bed with drip irrigation installed. And this is the plan I'll be following. It calls for a half inch supply line going to a T fitting. This allows the supply line to go to additional beds. There's also an inline valve to turn on and off water. The elbow fitting takes the supply line up to the top of the bed where you'll cap it. And you'll use small transfer barbs to take the drip line to the end of the beds. Everything is nicely mounted to the bed with small clamps. And each part has a part number next to it to make it easy for ordering. The one downside to Dripworks is I do feel that the shipping is quite expensive. However, you can sign up on their mailing list to get frequent coupons. Now here are what the parts actually look like. This is the main line, drip line, Y connector, end cap, elbow, and they work with compression. No tools needed. This is the punch into the main line. The transfer barbs fit into the drip line. And the drip line is capped off with goof plugs. These are the clips that hold everything together on the bed. And last is the valve. So I'm first going to start off by digging a trench for the main line. And I'll lay out all the parts. Since I already have drip line installed, I'm going to take my existing connection and put on an adapter that I can use to transfer water to the new beds. I'll then cut it where the connections need to go and I'll place the elbow followed by the Y connector and then I'll add the valve. Then the final elbow at the top of the bed. And I'll place a cap on that main line for the top of the bed. I'll then secure everything with clips. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like the video. I'll then punch five holes in the main line for that bed. I'll then use a transfer barb. With pliers, I'll push the transfer barbs into the main line. And then I'll put the drip line into the transfer barbs. The end of the drip line is capped off with a goof plug. Now that this bed is complete, I will repeat the steps on the remaining beds. The final step is turning on the water to make sure that there are no leaks. This is important before covering up all of the components. If you like this video, please be sure to subscribe, like, and post any comments into the comment section below. If you have any questions, I'll be sure to answer them right away. motivation of creating these videos are knowing that I'll be able to help you grow more food for your family. So please reach out, comment, like, and ask any questions. Thank you for watching this organic backyard gardening video.